And Chantal Maloney, she is a professor, associate professor of legal counsel on international crimes accountability at Milano Statale University. She joins us now from uh, Berlin. Chantal, good to have you on the show. I know that you were listening to both Joel and Hassan uh, just a moment ago. Joel made the point that this is a, um, a an historic case. Let me ask you um, if the ICG, uh, ICJ's uh, decisions are binding and are they enforceable in every case? Yes, indeed it is an historic case. I was yesterday at the Peace Palace, I was in The Hague, and I can tell you that already the fact that South Africa had the opportunity to make this claim, to make this case and present it for three hours in the most professional and detailed way in front of the highest court of the UN system, it is historical. It was really well done. The South African team has done an amazing, a tremendous work. So regardless of how the case will proceed now, and of course there are some open questions, but I am actually uh, kind of uh, optimist uh, about uh, this uh, strong case, we have already seen history in the making yesterday in The Hague. And with regard to now the provisional measures, so the court will issue uh, most probably within a few weeks, we can expect something like between two or four weeks, the possible order of provisional measures. This is not yet, of course, a decision on the merits of the case. So it's not to be confused with what will come after, which will be to assess whether Israel is in fact committing genocide and can be held responsible as a state for the commission of genocide. So with regard to the provisional measures, let's be very clear, the standard of proof is much lighter. The threshold is not the threshold of what comes after the merits of the case. And uh, um, of course, these measures, they are given by an order of the International Court of Justice, which is binding. And this means that whatever the court will decide to impose on Israel, this has binding uh, character. And then a separate question is whether Israel will comply with this. But oh. I think we will first need to see what are the measures that will be imposed on Israel. Chantal, I mean, I I'm wondering this uh, about this. You talked about uh, bringing a standard of proof. Um, do you feel that there is any significance that you have a, um, a, a post-apartheid state filing this case and that there is a sort of um, a moral weight uh, of their prerogative. It, does the fact that South Africa has brought this case to The Hague, is that going to play in at any uh, point, even if it's just in the back of the emotions of these judges? I think everyone feels it's very significant that it is South Africa, post-apartheid South Africa, that is bringing this case against Israel in The Hague, in the highest uh, judicial authority in the world. In a way, South Africa is uh, teaching a lesson to the entire world. Uh, as you know better than me, uh, Israel for decades now has basically ignored uh, uh, UN Security Council resolutions, uh, so binding resolutions, uh, and there was de facto no consequence uh, to the violations uh, of these numerous uh, resolutions. Uh, uh, in particular, I'm thinking about uh, settlements, uh, the fact that Israel was ordered to stop, to halt uh, the settlement enterprise in the occupied Palestinian territory. And the fact that now South Africa has taken uh, this case against Israel at the International Criminal Court is showing that it is possible for states, every state actually, under the UN umbrella, to ask for compliance with the international law, rules, principles. In the end, this is the law um, that we decided, the entire world decided after the Second World War, exactly after the Holocaust happened, to adopt because the world didn't want to see the risk of another genocide happening. So 
I think it makes a lot of sense uh, that we are seeing uh, South Africa bringing the lead, uh, so taking, sorry, the lead uh, on this case in The Hague. All right, great stuff. Antal Melanie, thank you very much for joining us here on the News Hour. I do appreciate it.